What's going on, guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and the HTC Arrive, well, it didn't arrive as scheduled yesterday. Here's the thing, it actually did. When I talked to the FedEx Overnight guy yesterday morning, he's like, your HTC Arrive didn't arrive uh, on our truck this morning, and it didn't arrive on the plane that just arrived from the Memphis warehouse. Your HTC Arrive, it's coming, but the Arrive hasn't arrived just yet. So as soon as it does arrive, we'll get that Arrive and make sure that it arrives on your doorstep. So it is finally here, and actually, I'm just kidding with the, uh, with the little rhyme and play on words, but it is actually here. It did come last night. The FedEx guy, I believe the truck broke down, but Sprint was just super awesome and shipping us another one. So actually, I have two Arrives at the moment. Double arrival, bam! But uh, we do have both. So special thanks to my friends at Sprint. But it is in the house now. We're gonna do an unboxing, take a look at the latest Windows phone and the first CDMA Windows phone that's actually come to Sprint this time around. So we're gonna see what it's like in the unboxing. Starts right now. Okay, here it is. Formerly known as the HTC 7 Pro, at least that's what it was when we got our hands on it at CTIA last year in San Francisco. It's the HTC Arrive now, and it's coming to Sprint on March 20th for $199.99. So it's the first CDMA Windows Phone 7 device, one of the few on the market that has a physical QWERTY keyboard. Now let's see what you get in the box here. You get, the, uh, of course, the device. Basically the same thing you get with any HTC device. The phone, the battery, the phone charger, and a uh, stereo headset and then your, uh, your instruction manuals as well. So it's a Windows Phone 7 device, obviously. It does come with the HTC Hub, and it comes with the, uh, the new Noto update to Windows Phone 7, so you can do copy and paste and a couple of other things which we'll outline a little bit later in the video. So it has a one gigahertz processor, Snapdragon processor to be exact, and a uh, five megapixel camera with HD video recording. So uh, good for those people that like to take pictures and like to shoot video every now and again. There's your manual, it's in that same uh, eco-friendly paper or eco-friendly bag that uh, most of the HTC stuff comes with. And then here's your AC adapter module, which you've, you've seen a million times on the Android devices. And some of the Windows Phone 7 devices, typical HTC there. And you'll see here, I'm not gonna bore you too much with this because the same thing comes in every one of these boxes. USB cable and then your stereo earbuds, and we'll, while we're doing that, we'll wait for this one to power on. We'll look at the design a little bit. Let's see here. On this one, stereo, this bag doesn't want to open. There we go, okay. Oop. And then there are the earbuds, pretty basic, pretty plain Jane, but they do have the HTC logo on the back, and it gives you something, and hey, you know, in this market, I'll take anything for free in my box. $199.99, like I said, so you know, if you do, Listen to music a lot or anything like that, you're probably going to need some additional accessories like a case and some better earphones and things like that. But still, hey, get them in the box. That's pretty cool. So that's packaging up. Let's see if this is... Did I hit the power button? Maybe I didn't press it long enough or the battery could be dead. We'll wait and see here. So while we're uh, waiting for that, or while we're uh, figuring that out, we'll take a look at the design. Nice design. Uh, it kind of resembles, to me at least, a little bit the... Uh, the HTC surround on AT&T, with the exception of some of the color schemes on the back. The battery door is you know, a different color scheme, and obviously it's metal, as opposed to uh, some of the other parts of the device that are plasticky here. But uh, this typical form, or this typical design that you're used to from the HD7 is uh, available on this device. And you can see back here, five megapixel camera with a flash. And then of course the battery door, which does give you instructions how to remove. I spent all night last night on the other HTC demo unit trying to figure out how to remove the battery door, and the trick is you have to open up the slide, let the keyboard pop out, and then there's the little place where you can remove it. So, a little bit harder than most, but hey, you know what, we accomplished it, and that's what matters. So here is the battery door, and you can see what comes out of that. 1500 milliamp battery comes pre-installed with this device, which I think should be a minimum for all Android and Windows Phone 7 devices, because really anything less, like the uh, 1,230 milliamp battery on the HD7, not so hot when it comes to battery life numbers. So, you know, pretty uh, pretty challenging to make it through the day with a battery that small. So 1,500, good stuff. And here's what the keyboard looks like. It's a five row physical QWERTY keyboard, numbers on top. And then what I do like about this keyboard, on this side at least, it very closely resembles a physical QWERTY keyboard like you find on the computer. What I don't like is that you'll notice that the P to LM, they're kind of angled in an odd direction on this side. So once you get to about G over here and you're trying to type where you think, like you're typing poly, for example, it's not exactly where you would think it would be as opposed to a physical computer keyboard. So there also is no option to keep this down like this. So if you wanted to type with the screen flush, you can't keep it down. It does pop up. So, you know, it, to me at least, 
it reminds me a lot of some of the older Sprint devices, the Windows uh, mobile devices that were on Sprint where you had to kind of type, but you had to hold it like this to me, which was a little frustrating, uh, holding it like that as opposed to holding it straight down. But still, you know, I would have preferred it to have been like that, but, whoop, but you do have that you know, little flip that you can't get rid of. So some people may love it, some people may hate it. I don't care for it, but uh, it's nice to have the physical QWERTY keyboard. To continue on design a little bit, you can see 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the top, power button on the top as well, and then you see this unique little structure here for the hinge. Now there's no joke about it. I mean, this is a pretty thick device. You can see this in comparison to uh, something like the Motorola Click 2, just for example. I mean, it's about as large. I mean, so, you know, when you go into the store to buy this, expect a larger device than something like the HD7 or the iPhone 4 or the Motorola Droid Pro on Verizon. Uh, it is, you know, it's definitely a hefty device. And you can see that when you slide it out, you can see that hinge pops up. And that's what reveals the battery cover or reveals the part to remove the battery. And then that slides down like that when it's not there. So you have this battery door, like I said, and you have this cool little design with the camera, and then you have a uh, micro USB charging port in the bottom left-hand corner, and my favorite physical camera button on the right side. Here we go, let's open this up and see what comes installed out of the box. You'll see the HTC hub with the weather here. Nice little improvement where I can see the weather, the highs and the lows of the day, and I can click on it, and I can download HTC specific apps uh, and some other things as well. See the weather updates, forecast for the next few days. You can see, bam, there it is. Charlotte weather, 44 degrees. And then I can click on it and see the additional weather. So it has this kind of, the sense, unfortunately, you know, Microsoft isn't allowing HTC, at least at this moment, to incorporate any sense stuff into the core Windows Phone 7 experience. But hopefully with this Nokia thing, you know, hopefully HTC will say, hey, you're letting them do it. Why won't you let us do it? And we'll see what happens, you know, uh, down the road the next six months, a year, or something like that. So otherwise, you know, not a lot's changed between the CDMA, you know, the first CDMA device here, and all of the GSM devices that have uh, preceded it, with the exception of, of course, copy and paste, and uh, a few other minor software tweaks. So we'll take a look at that really quickly. Let's jump into messaging. We'll go here. We'll type in the Quick Brown. Whoops, the Quick Brown Fox is hungry for grass. I don't know, whatever the quick brown fox eats. Quick brown fox is hungry for grass. So you can see easy to type on portrait and landscape, but let's say, get into landscape mode there, there we go. Portrait and landscape mode, then of course you can use the physical QWERTY, but like I said, I mean, it's just angled odd to me. I don't know if that's just me, but I don't like when I'm holding down, you know, I'm holding it like this, you can see the display is angled at an odd angle where it should be, you know, your the viewfinder is exactly how I'm looking at it right now. So you would think that they would have done it like that, or at least given you the option to keep it that way. But maybe I'm just rambling on about that. Anyway, let's take a look at the copy and paste. I can tap one word, bam, can extend out, and you see the copy and paste option. So I can go down here, blah, 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 and then I can paste it there. So the Quake Brown, or Quake Brown Fox is hungry for grass. So you see how it works. It's still kind of, you know, <laughs> wet behind the ears and not necessarily the best copy and paste functionality, you know, versus other mobile devices on the market, but at least it's still, uh, at least it's still an option there. And obviously, since this is a Sprint branded device, you'll see uh, Sprint Zone on this device in place of things like T-Mobile TV and, you know, some of the other carrier installed applications that are on the other devices. So we can click on that. That comes on the home screen out of the box as a tile, and we can see the Sprint Zone here. Take a look. Sprint Zone. And then we'll download Sprint TV, for example, although I was having issues the other night with this. It keeps saying can't get this info. I don't know if that's because the device hasn't officially launched yet or what's going on, but I do have my live ID in here. So, you know, I don't know why it's not downloading, but you get the idea. It's a Sprint, you know, kind of a place where it compiles Sprint news, Sprint applications, uh, like Sprint radio, Sprint TV, etc. And then, of course, you have Telenav GPS Navigator installed out of the box. Although uh, Microsoft's Maps program, it's pretty good. So I don't know if you'll, you know, how many times you'll actually need that, but we'll try and figure it out in the full review. Much more coverage to come on the HTC Arrive now that it's finally arrived at PhoneDog.com. So be sure to keep it locked on the site for continuing coverage. Be sure to follow us or like us on Facebook, rather, Facebook.com slash PhoneDog. We just started our brand new giveaway. It's the Colossal iPad 2 and Smartphone Sweepstakes. We're giving away iPad 2s. We're giving away smartphones. You get to decide which one you get, and the best part is we're giving them away from now 
through the summer. So big giveaway. We're giving them out every couple of weeks. So be on the lookout for that. Facebook.com slash phone dog. Be sure to like us. Follow me on Twitter as well. Phone dog underscore Aaron with any questions, comments, thoughts you have about this device or any other videos that I've done in the past. Thanks so much for watching. Keep it locked on the site. And as always, we'll see you next time.